Are you familiar with after the 2014 revolution or coup or whatever you want to call it, the, there was a recorded phone call with Victoria Newland and another um, high up senator or something in the U.S. There was a recorded phone call between them and Victoria Newland is talking about two people and who would be the best fit to be the president of the Ukraine next. And she's basically saying, yes, I think we think this guy's the best fit. We just need to sign off from Biden. Who is who is Victoria Newland? Victoria Newland is the lady who was just interviewed in front of Congress the other day by um, I think it was Marco Rubio talking okay, about okay. chemical weapons being in the Ukraine. Right, she's been right. she's been deeply involved with the Ukraine for a okay. very long time. Neoconservative, her husband's a neoconservative. Okay, um, her husband is uh, Robert Kagan. Okay. And there was a there well, was a recorded phone call with her talking about who would be the next best fit for president of the Ukraine after that coup. Well, okay, but that's talk. And it uh, it, it I don't think it is possible for the American government to install a a president in a country like Ukraine. Do you think during that during that revolution um when the opposition was going up against um the police force of the ukraine the the are you aware like the the snipers and all the people that were get, that were getting killed there was oh police, sure the, was the, the, the war was ongoing uh and uh, i uh, i i told you about uh, uh the the journalist uh, who who told me who who was in charge who was the uh, the correspondent for for um, the Guardian, he wrote a book. is called uh, the Long Hangover, and mm. that has a lot uh, a lot of stuff is in there about the ongoing back and forth between uh, U Ukraine or within Ukraine and Russia and so forth, and and it it, it was deadly for a long time. There is no hint in in his writing that the Americans had really any thing to do with it the guy is really good i'd be really interested to hear your thoughts if, if we could find it austin could you find the youtube video uh of the recorded phone call with victoria newland talking about the next leader of ukraine uh, and she, she mentions biden no biden was not in the picture it's he was the vice president it was obama was the president he was the vice president at that time okay in, and, in and biden wasn't charge of ukraine yes uh, yes i uh, i remember that now and then he had his son his son was a board member of one of the big energy companies mm. that was formed right in right. the ukraine President so fast forward Island, and there was a phone call that was there accepted. here it is okay it was a call between full screen the assistant secretary of state for european affairs victoria newland and the u.s ambassador to ukraine jeffrey pyatt questions of credibility are being raised after a private chat between two top U.S. diplomats was leaked online. I think Yats is the guy who's got the economic experience, the governing experience. He's, he's the guy, you know, what he needs is Cleach and Tony Book on the outside. I, I, I just think Cleach going in, he's going to be at that level working for Yatsenyuk. It's just not going to work. Yeah, no, it, I, think that's, you know. I think that's right. Okay. Good. Well, do you want us to try to set up a call with him? Next step. Sullivan's come back to me uh, VFR saying you need Biden and I said probably tomorrow for an attaboy and to get the deeds to stick so okay. Biden's willing. So you had this remarkable phone call where you have these two senior officials of the U.S. government apparently talking about a coup or how they were planning to restructure the government of Ukraine. Fuck the EU. No exactly. I'm not saying the whole <laughs> Fuck the EU. feels that way. The, there's, there is division on this, but the neoconservative element wants very much to change the strategic dynamic in Eastern Europe. By the way, this documentary was just banned from YouTube last week. This okay. was an Oliver Stone documentary. Oh, really? Yes. So, you know, when, when I hear neocons being involved... Uh, the whole story has more credibility because uh, the neocons and and I think they they're not all, they weren't they're not all Republicans. Uh, right. This is, no. Yeah. Hillary they're, Clinton. They're, yes, they're warmongers and on both sides, and and they they are hawks and they're irresponsible. And you want to know something crazy about that lady, Victoria Newland? Her husband. If you could Google her husband, Robert Kagan, one of the biggest advocates of the Iraq War. 
Mm -hmm. So anyways, the documentary is fascinating and it goes into the whole, the whole thing. And they talk about agent provocateurs being a part of that revolution in Ukraine, killing cops and killing Ukrainian cops and killing, um, parts of the resistance that that sounds very similar to some of the worst uh, activities that uh, was conducted by the cia for instance in chile right uh, and, yep uh, i mean that was that was hor it's horrendous. the cia playbook right yes and uh, that was not supposed to be repeated now if, if this <laughs> uh, if this grows this is could be, become one of the biggest scandal in the history of the United States, but yeah, we don't have enough to go by as to whether they actually followed through on the talk. Mm -hmm. There's the you know signals, yeah, and then Biden Biden was in charge of Ukraine, but right. but but Biden was never a hawk, was he? I don't think so. Um, yeah, Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, and uh, you don't know what whether Barack Obama had an, a an independent opinion. Uh, whether they saw eye to eye on these things, mm. hey, he's, you're scaring me. But I'm I'm at the edge of uh, my my sandbox that says competence. Right. Well, in the interviews, you know, he he talk, he discusses this with Putin, and Putin is very much aware of all of it, and he says, you know, this is what we're used to. This has been going on forever. Um, during that revolution, he let the forget the name of the current president that was there. He let him go to Russia. Um, and the EU backed president came and then took over, um, took over Ukraine anyways. And then, and then, you know, it's scary. It's, 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 it's dark. <laughs> but, but, but then you take the, the article that he was, it, it's, uh, about 6,000 words. It's a pretty lengthy, rather, uh, elaborate article about his plans. Uh, that doesn't say anything about you know, responding to the, the to the evil uh, United States, it says, right. "This is my vision." Right. So that vision was there before. True. And and even even if uh, we monkeyed in the Ukraine, that still does not excuse what Putin has done to innocent women and children. Right. There is no justification for that. Now, we're doing. What are what is the U.S. doing specifically, like seizing the yachts of these oligarchs and going after the oligarchs? How does that cripple or how does that hurt Putin? Uh, no, the uh, oligarchs, well, <laughs> yeah, they become somewhat feckless once once they all leave the country. If if they are actually in in opposition to the war, uh, the, they may lose control of what they currently still control in in, in Russia. Uh, I think what 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 hurts more is uh, uh, sh uh, limiting the ability of, of Russia to uh, be involved in international commerce. Mm. I mean, they already have shortages all over the place. Right, right. Uh, and no Wi-Fi. And I mean, they don't have. They can't go to the grocery store. They can't yes. watch Netflix. And uh, they can't go to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Well, th this is inconvenience, but. Uh, I don't know if the entire SWIFT system has been, uh, uh, Russia has locked, been locked out of that. If so, they can't do any commerce. In, uh, mm. Because, you know, have you ever made money abroad? No. So in, <laughs> I have <laughs> euros, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you need to get a SWIFT account to get money transferred right. from, from there to here. Mm -hmm. So this, this is, SWIFT is the system that enables international commerce. And I think at least partially it has been blocked uh, to the extent the um, Europe still buying gas and oil uh, that may still be be working. But but the Russians are feeling it. Mm -hmm. And in uh, in in his most recent speech, uh, Putin has acknowledged it and he said, "Well, yeah, this we're going to have this, this, and this is all going to be pretty bad. But we need to get through this. To uh, it's for the greater good of the country." And uh, believe it or not, most of the Russians are behind him. So if people think, you know, oh yeah, there's mass demonstrations and he will be toppled by an angry populace, not going to happen. Not going to happen. No. Because uh, uh, there has been too much uh, propaganda, whether that is, new, whether that is right or has, uh, has roots in, in reality or not. The, 
the 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 majority of the the Russian people believe in the propaganda that comes out of Putin's government, and that's a, it's it's an ideology. It's mm. called Russian nationalism, mm. and he's he's been pursuing that ever since he became the head of state.